Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, Cloud Identity for Nonprofits, How City Year Streamlines User Access to Advance Their Mission. I just want to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. So all callers will be muted. If you have questions, you should see a chat box to the left-hand side of your screen. That's where you can ask any questions that you have as the webinar uh, goes along, and we'll try and get to them uh, one by one. And then we'll also have a Q&A at the end. If you lose your Internet connection, try refreshing your browser and reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. If you want to uh, listen to the webinar again once it's over, you can go to TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars to listen to the webinar again. Or if you have to drop off early, we'll be hosting the webinar there. You'll also receive an email with the presentation, the recording, and any relevant links once the webinar is over. And you can also t send us a tweet at TechSoup and use hashtag TSWebinars throughout the webinar. Um, but if you really want to uh, get the question answered immediately, you can use the Q&A box to the left-hand side. So just a little bit about TechSoup. So we are located in 236 countries and territories. We partner with several technology companies like Adobe, Intuit, Microsoft, uh, Symantec. And today we have Okta joining us along with City Year. So uh, just to give you guys a chance to practice using the chat box, I would love to hear where you guys are calling in from. And I can read a few of them out. All right, so we have Cincinnati, Indianapolis, uh, Millbrook, Southeast Texas, Central Ohio, uh, right down the hall. So somebody at TechSoup is joining us, which is nice. Um, cool, so we have people calling in from all over the country, which is great. Um, so just a little bit about our partnership with Okta. So uh, Okta and TechSoup recently joined forces to help people with cloud identity um, and single sign-on uh, technology services. And we're offering uh, 20, 25 free licenses. So once the webinar is over and you have a better understanding of how the technology works, please visit uh, TechSoup.org slash how-octa-helps nonprofits to get more information and um, learn more about the, the technology from there. So just a little bit about our speaker today. So we have Christine Sullivan who is the Vice President of IT Services at City Year. She leads the execution of City Year's U.S. technology strategy. And she came to City Year at the launch stage of the program, which now serves 28 locations and 4,000 staff and AmeriCorps members. She has a background in project management and customer service. And you'll learn more about her work uh, throughout today's presentation. And we also have Erin Baudreau Felter, who is the Executive Director of Okta for Good which is Okta's Corporate Social Impact Initiative. And she has worked at the intersection of business and social impact for over a decade and has held various corporate social impact roles at Zynga, Yahoo, and Warner Brothers. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Christine. Thank you very much, Seema. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Christine. Very pleased to um, be participating today. And um, wanted to start out today by just telling you a little bit about City Year and our mission. Um, as Seema mentioned, we're about 4,000 4, uh, members strong. But um, what we are, or who we are, is um, an education organization fueled by national services. So um, we're highly dependent upon the AmeriCorps model. Um, so any of you in the audience, if you've done a year of service, thank you very much. And um, uh, hope that um, you enjoyed learning a little bit about City Year. Um, basically, we have a model where our AmeriCorps members who join us for 10 months partner with public schools in our high-need communities to help students graduate from high school on track, on time, ready for um, college or a career opportunity. The way um, the model works is we have all of our uh, school team members serving in schools full-time. They are with our students that we serve from the first morning bell through the after school programs um, that City Year supports in the communities where we serve. Um, nearly 80% of our core members are recent college graduates. Um, we hire, uh, recruit and hire AmeriCorps members throughout the year um, through a very selective recruiting process. 
and um, basically have our members join us. Um, they serve our students as tutors and mentors in a near peer model. So working with kids identified as high risk um, in an area where they, they may not be able to graduate from high school without some extra support. So just a little bit about uh, why CityEar was founded and um, why are we here? What are we looking to solve? And basically the challenge that we are working to address as an organization is the gap between what our students need and what many schools are designed and resourced to provide. Um, the students that we work with in high need communities often face obstacles outside of the schoolhouse that interfere with their ability to rise at school every day ready to learn. Um, and that's where our AmeriCorps members come in. The AmeriCorps members come into our um, school partners and work with students who often need some extra support. So as you can see um, on the slide I have up, um, that there's a gap. We have a lot of schools that were built um, back in the 90s and 50s and 60s um, that are still operating in sort of a legacy model that don't necessarily provide um, extra supports that our, our kids coming to school may need today. Um, and that's where City Year comes in with that extra support and provides intervention time with students that need support either um, from an academic standpoint, a behavior standpoint, or even getting to school on time. There are a lot of obstacles in the way in the communities that we serve. Um, and that's where our members come in to make that difference. Um, and just to give you a little bit more of um, sort of the, the problem at hand, um, because of this gap and the identified need, um, low graduation rates are um, pretty, um, they're, they're a reality in the schools where we serve. And um, just to give you a, a fact on that, just over um, half of the schools where we serve, only 63% of our students are making it to 10th grade um, and in a position to graduate on time with their class. Okay, um, just one more thing. Um, so what we're, what we're looking to do and, and our mission as an organization is to really have um, a long-term impact strategy. And um, with the model that we have in place and um, this near peer model, by um, year 2023, we are looking to dramatically increase the number of students who arrive on track and on time to that 10th grade um, to graduate successfully um, with the rest of their peers um, at grade level. So um, just a little bit more on our model just to give you um, some background on us and our mission and um, why, why we decided to look into technology and investing in um, supporting our long-term impact strategy. Um, this slide is really just um, some demographics on who we are. So as Seema mentioned, we're about 4,000 members strong. We have 3,000 AmeriCorps members that join us for 10 months of service. Um, when we get to our technology strategy, you can imagine that that's a little bit of a challenge for particularly a nonprofit organization with um, resource constraints, um, getting those members onboarded on time to go out and serve in the communities where we serve. We currently have 28 sites across the U.S. where we're serving, um, and we have uh, now close to 400 uh, school districts and school partners where we're serving on a daily basis. The impact and the, the range of that is we're serving close to 250,000 students on a daily basis. With the long-term impact strategy that I mentioned earlier, we hope to be serving over a million students um, by the time we finish um, or we, we reach our um, long-term impact uh, strategy, which is in phase two of um, that work right now. Um, and just a little bit more on this. So, um, I mentioned previously that um, the 3,000 AmeriCorps members are um, arriving in school partner sites on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. They're there before the first morning bell to meet our students that we're serving, and that's the whole school. We're outside greeting students, cheering them on, 
getting them into school, making sure that they're getting into classes. And then throughout the school day, we are working with children one-on-one -on -one who have an area where they need some extra support, whether that's academically, um, they may have a behavior issue, or um, they're, they're just not coming to school on time. We do a lot of outreach to the community, to parents and guardians to make sure we're understanding uh, reasons that are preventing uh, students from even stepping through the schoolhouse doors in the morning, um, to, again, to get them back on track and graduating with their peers. So um, this is probably my favorite topic to talk about is the technology strategy because I've had the pleasure of working at City Year for six years now and actually watched and helped support the transformation of our technology strategy. But um, at, at the root of our mission, um, we're here to serve our students on a daily basis. And we're here to make our AmeriCorps members successful and make sure that every minute they have is pointed towards a student and not spent uh, looking for information to support curricular activities and um, all of the events that we're serving in the, at the school. So um, really the question at hand is why did City Year why did City Year decide to make investments in its tech strategy? Where does identity management fit in? And where did we, where did we start our journey um, to really revitalize what we had um, back when I started, which was a very disparate environment? Um, instead of introducing you into sort of our, our technology roadmap, what I thought I would start with is just how we started thinking about what a technology refresh and investment meant to City Year in terms of its mission and how we support um, our students and support our AmeriCorps members. When we started this work six years ago, we were largely working in a hub and spoke network environment with about 50 systems that we knew were unsustainable. They weren't scalable to help us achieve our mission. So we started conducting due diligence um, keeping in mind that we had a strategy to support, um, but above all, what we, what we built needed to stick. It needed to be sustainable, it needed to be accessible, and technology um, is really not on the top of minds um, for our support professionals out in the field helping our students. So I'm going to run through our guiding principles, which was really sort of foundational for us when we started out thinking about a tech strategy. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I've been here for six years, and I've, I've watched these guiding principles lead us into an implementation and production environment that is sustainable and scalable, um, which also has Okta at the core from an identity management standpoint, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, so connectivity and mobility um, is core to our model. About 80% of our workforce is arriving at a school partner across the U.S. on a daily basis. Um, they are not working in an office. So being able to get to our tools and our enterprise systems is crucial, um, which is why identity management is at the core of what we have built out. Business intelligence was another area at the forefront of our implementation was something we knew we needed to build to, meaning as systems were introduced into City Year, they needed to be integrated and they needed to serve a higher purpose of providing some predictive analytics as we got our main systems installed. Um, this is probably my favorite, returning time to school partners. As you can imagine, if um, we're out and out and about in, in schoolyards and schoolhouses on a daily basis, our Amer AmeriCorps members have um, much more important things to do with our students than um, poking around trying to find curriculum or trying to log into a system back at City Year to get work done. So um, every minute um, spent trying to poke around and log into a system is one minute away from our students. So um, overall, we've done a lot of um, analysis and um, feel that we've had a very good return on investment as far as our technology roadmap. 
and um, accessibility into systems to return that time to school partners annually. And then finally, um, the secure environment. Um, we handle and are good stewards of a lot of school district data on a daily basis. It's needed for our work. It's needed for our mission. We needed a tool wrapped around our enterprise programs um, that can help us safely deliver private and sensitive data out to our workforce and be confident that that data is getting into the right hands at the right time for us to make decisions on the ground in the schoolhouse. Um, so ahead of all of the work that we did to implement and move into a new um, refreshed technology environment were all of these guiding principles that have um, stood the test of time since we began that transformation and um, are now um, continue in the work we do with the, the new systems that we have in place. And Erin, I think I'll send it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Christine. Hello, everybody. This is Erin from Octa for Good. Um, so what I want to do now is zoom out for a second from, from Christine's story um, and, and what she shared about their, their mission, their guiding principles, and how they think about technology. Um, to really talk about what we are seeing in terms of what's happening with IT on a, on a much broader level. Um, city years needs are, are complex. Uh, they're challenging. They're incredibly important to their mission, uh, but they're not necessarily unique. Um, so, you know, what we're seeing at Okta and how we kind of think about the world is, you know, across every sector, we're seeing these paradigm shifts that we kind of look at in three categories. And they're outlined here on the slide with, with, some, with some thought bubbles to bring it, bring it back home for some of you who may be experiencing some of these pain points. Uh, the first point is that what we say is integration is everything, right? So even the smallest organizations today are using maybe dozens of applications and tools. Uh, and for larger or more established organizations, you also add in a lot of legacy technologies that are still being used. And so your ability as an organization to make all of those tools work seamlessly together and to keep things simple for your end users uh, depends on how well you integrate. So that's point one. Point two um, is that people are now the perimeter. This is sort of a security issue, right? So it used to be that your network or your firewall were the security control points for your organization. Um, but today, when you think about your users, whether they're employees, donors, volunteers, um, th they could be coming in from any network any device, as Christine said, they could be coming in from a school site, um, any location. And so trying to access all of these applications from all these places, the, the people themselves become the new security control point. That's really important to, to understand that shift. Um, and then the third shift is that really every organization across every sector is having to become a technology organization. So now, not only do you have to manage technology access for your employees, um, but you may be expected to understand how to connect with your clients, your beneficiaries, your volunteers, or other stakeholders via the right technology. Um, and this is probably, you know, from what we're seeing, this is probably the most important change that organizations across all industries are trying to embrace. Um, and the reason it's, it's so important is that the big opportunity, certainly for nonprofits, is that when you figure out how to leverage the right technology to engage all of your stakeholders, you can accelerate your mission even, even further and even faster, right? So because of these new realities, identity is more important than ever. So, so what do we mean by identity? It's a simple idea. If you definitively know who someone is, what their role is, and what their relationship is to your organization, where they're located, what network they're on, what device they're using, what applications they're trying to access, um, what time of day it is. All these details come together to inform who, who this person's identity is. If you know all of this information, you should be able to provide that person with the most productive, most secure, and most personalized experience possible via technology. Um, the reality is both the people and the technologies that your organizations are engaging with are constantly changing, right? You have um, employees that need to access technologies, but increasingly, like I said, you have volunteers, you might have board members, um, beneficiaries who all need to access some piece of your organization's technology. Um, and these people are not sitting behind a desk, they're using mobile devices, they're out in the, in the field, and their relationship to your mission is changing as well. Um, and, and 
in addition to that, you know, on the right side of the slide, it's the technologies that they're using are changing. Um, the apps your users need are changing faster than ever before. Um, and because of that, the one constant in this equation is identity. And that's why that sits in the middle here of this picture. This idea of identity management is what Okta was founded on nearly 10 years ago. So our vision and mission is to enable any organization to use any technology today and in the future. We do this by securely connecting an organization's people to the set of tools they want to use. Um, and we as, a, as an organization are, are really energized by this pursuit in part because it hits on challenges that literally every organization on the planet is grappling with. So if you're grappling with this stuff on the call, you are not alone and it's hard. Um, but it's something that you know, we, are, we are excited about because we see it as so fundamental to um, how organizations can really um, achieve their missions and transform themselves. That of course includes nonprofits. And so, um, this is why 18 months ago or so, Okta as a company took the 1% pledge and founded Okta for Good. Um, this is a way really for us to focus our company's resources on helping nonprofit organizations better manage their technology challenges and really redirect resources to fulfilling their missions. Um, it was actually, I wanna thank Christine and Sidier. They were customers of Okta's long before Okta for Good was uh, a program. And they really, they and a few other really key strategic partners in our early days really helped our leadership to understand, better understand the needs of nonprofit organizations and started to point out the ways that we could really help the sector. Um, so thank you, Christine. <laughs> um, since launching Octa for Good, we've directed over a million dollars of technology to organizations reaching more than 800, I would say a million dollars of donated technology to organizations reaching more than 830,000 users. And those numbers are great, we're proud of them, but I, I wanna let you guys know it's really just the beginning, very, very early days for Octa for Good. And it's, a, it's an exciting time for us, um, you know, in terms of Octa for Good, because our nonprofit customers are not only benefiting from this program that we have and from the technology that we have, but we really feel like we are able to help um, but I think more importantly, they're helping us learn how to better serve the sector. So as we grow and develop, um, we are really trying to evolve our nonprofit technology offering as well as our philanthropy overall as a company, um, really trying to evolve it with the insights and feedback in mind from all of our wonderful partners. And so it's a really fun time to, I think, be engaging with us. Um, if, you're, if you're also passionate about sort of helping companies like ours really shape and think about how we can be more effective corporate philanthropists. Um, and I can talk more about that later if you guys are interested. So, all right. So before I turn it back to Christine, I want to show you guys one more thing. Um, I sort of talked a bit high level on some of these IT paradigm shifts and topic, the topic of identity management, you know, at the highest level. I want to show you this because when we talk about Okta, we talk about integrating all your organization's technologies and giving every user a seamless and secure experience. This is really what we mean. Okay, so this is an Okta, the Okta dashboard. So for any user of your organization, if, if they use Okta or something like it, they log in once with a single username and password and they can access all the applications they uniquely need to do their work. Um, the dashboard kind of illustrates the simplicity of single sign-on and what that means uh, from the end user's perspective. So, you know, if you're an employee of, of, of an organization, you log in once to Okta, and then you can navigate seamlessly between Gmail, Box, Salesforce, et cetera, without having to log in again. This obviously enables your users to focus on your organization's mission instead of remembering passwords and logging into stuff and, uh, and resetting passwords and all that. So it's really important from the end user perspective um, for that simplicity and just returning time to them to get their work done. Um, but it's also great for your IT team because it's reducing the number of help desk tickets, password reset requests, and time spent providing and revoking access one by one to these applications. You kind of centrally manage that all in Okta. Um, and again, the idea is returning time, which Christine already mentioned, and she'll talk about more in a minute. Um, that's really what this is all about. So you can focus that time back um, on, the, on the work and on the projects that you and your organization values most. 
So that's it for me for now. I'm going to turn it back over to Christine to continue her, her um, story. Go ahead, Christine. Great. Thank you, Erin, and thank you for the um, kind words. Um, I think um, the next slide will, will help tell the story a little bit more about what Erin was talking about in terms of returning time and why identity management is an important consideration as um, you're looking at your overall technology roadmap. And um, you know, if you have sort of some of the same use cases that we have as we were building, right, around security and being mindful of returning time and just that ease of access. Um, I, I can't stress enough, every minute counts um, for our members in front of our students. Um, and by design, um, we selected and have partnered with Okta to make that um, seamless for our environment. So just to sort of emphasize that, the slide you're looking at is really um, sort of a high level architecture uh, graphic of what City Year's technology strategy looks like today. And I won't spend a lot of time on it because um, it even overwhelms me sometimes to look at it. But the net net is we are a 100% cloud-based shop. We moved from, um, as I mentioned earlier, a data center rich environment with over 50 systems um, to this environment today. So everything that you're looking at on the slide is a web-based or SaaS-based platform. Um, in the, the box called Core Business Systems, we use uh, a variety of Salesforce instances as well as Workday and Office 365. Um, and uh, those are the main systems that people log into at City Year on a daily basis to do their work. Um, and, and wrapped around that is our identity management layer, which is Okta. So um, without further ado, I'm going to move to the next slide and just give you a real-time example of what identity management can look like and what Okta has offered up to City Year as far as um, returning time to our school partners and um, removing uh, mobility issues out of the way for our workforce. So um, this is an actual snapshot of my portal. And, um, you know, rather than, than asking our members who are only spending 10 months with us on an annual basis um, to get acquainted with navigating to systems, we are using Okta and the single sign-on experience to deliver this portal, uh, which provides seamless, secure access to all of the applications that they need uh, while doing their year of service, and this goes for our staff members as well. Um, but just think about this versus uh, attempting to navigate across multi-systems and trying to remember um, which ones to use for what. Um, we do a lot of heavy internal branding here, which is why some of the tiles um, may look a little bit different from some of the applications I just talked about. But this is one-stop shopping for our network. Um, and it's, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from our members who uh, are with us. We do a lot of surveying upfront and at the end of their year when they graduate for um, what their year of service looked like up to and including the technology experience. Um, this has really uh, helped us just to eliminate a lot of confusion. And as you can imagine on the IT side, it's returning time to my team also because we're not spending um, hours on the phone um, with sites and individual members trying to reset passwords or navigate to systems um, when it's necessary to find um, material for school curriculum or enter time tracking or you name it. Um, it's all here and if you can get to the portal, you can get to your tools um, and you, you don't need a lot of assistance from IT even just to reset your password because it's all in this experience right here. Um, so I can't say enough about <clears throat> if you're uh, sort of reevaluating where you are from a tech standpoint within your own organization to really take a look at identity management as a service <clears throat> and give Okta a look too. Um, you can do your own research and uh, see where they wind up um, in the Gartner and all the reviews online, but they're a great partner to work with. Um, so just before I leave here, uh, the net net is you know from a, a member experience, if you're out in a school partner site 
and you're serving 12 to 14 hours a day, and you're working with high need students that need your time and attention, the last thing you need is to need to navigate back to your organization's uh, technology stack to try to figure out where to locate material to help yourself uh, or where to record time that you've spent with a student. This is um, really the most uh, seamless thing we have in our environment and um, easily accessible by everyone just to keep our mission moving forward in order to achieve that long-term impact strategy that I described earlier. All right. Um, and then in closing, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about returning time. I'm, I've probably overemphasized that at this point, but um, this, is, this is really what um, we look like on a daily basis, um, even sitting at city or headquarters. Um, this is who we are, right? We're, we're, build, we're, we're supporting technology and we're supporting our members out in the field. But our work is really about our students. Our work is about supporting our AmeriCorps members who are key to solving uh, the gap in uh, schools and um, the overall uh, dropout crisis in the um, areas where we're currently serving. So uh, our time matters to the students that we serve, and the more we scale and the more we move into um, communities where we can help with some of the problems uh, where early warning indicators indicate that we have a problem and we need to support more students, um, the better we're going to get at closing uh, the education gap. And um, you know, really, the, the words in the middle of the screen, we believe every child has potential and we know all children can succeed, is what fuels everyone in our organization um, to come in every day and do the work that we do um, and to do the hard work to support both all of our, our students and our school partners, but most importantly, um, our, um, excuse me, our AmeriCorps members who are serving in the field um, and doing the hard work every day. Um, we try to do what we can to make everything easy for them um, based on what they're faced with and the challenges that they're supporting on a daily basis. Um, so this is the reality, right? The portal is where you go to find your systems and your tools, um, but the end result is really about supporting the students we serve um, out in the communities where <coughs> we are um, helping our school partners. Um, and then I guess just to tie it back before I send um, uh, over to Erin, um, from a results standpoint at a high level, um, you know, our partnership with Okta has obviously solved a lot of use cases that we were concerned about and, you know, not only returned time to our workforce, but improved our efficiencies as an IT team and um, returned time to us, which is um, also important so we can um, turn our IT staff uh, into um, other areas where we need to other, uh, solve other critical business problems. Win-win um, on that, and we um, are happy to partner with Okta on that. We have a great use case out on their website if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, we, we're really all about efficient access management. We do not believe that uh, anyone at this point with all these great tools uh, available, particularly through the Okta for Good program, should be struggling with access management. Um, it's a great product. Um, the partnership with Okta made it easy to um, work through our due diligence and testing and um, uh, really solve a, a very large uh, use case we had, particularly as we know we will scale and have more members join us year to year. Um, and then improved user experience. Um, you know, it's, you really can't argue with um, logging onto a portal and having all your tools accessible to you and and not having to worry about access or passwords or what you should or shouldn't have access to because it's, it's all mapped out for you and it's, it's easy to use. And again, um, hopefully adding value to someone's day um, when we're also mission focused. And then finally, just that secure access, um, particularly with all of the data that we're safeguarding and that we need to get to the core of our 
values and, and surveying um, out at our school partners, it's critical that we have access to real-time data to understand how our students are operating and where they need extra supports or have we graduated someone out of our program because they've made such progress. All of that data is um, easily and securely accessible to our members when they need it the most. Erin, I'll pass it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Christine. Um, so just again, to, to recap on the office side, our mission really is to enable any organization to connect to any technology. Uh, and if, as you've heard from Christine, you know, that, that means something very important for City Year. Uh, it means something very important to any organization. This is a challenge that is really universal. And again, that's why we're so excited about, uh, about partnering to solve it. An Octa for Good commitment really is to extend this idea of connection to our communities and support nonprofits in this journey. Um, I like to use this slide and these pictures because uh, the guy on the far right holding that giant box of stuff is our CEO. <laughs> um, and, I, and I put this picture on here to demonstrate that this is, this is a commitment that really is coming from the highest levels of our company. This means something very, very important to us at Okta that we can um, have the privilege of, of helping nonprofits to solve their technology challenges and accelerate their missions. And it's something that, that truly does come from, from the top um, and, and all across our organization. And we're very, very excited about being at the, the beginning of this journey to, um, to better serve nonprofits. So in that spirit, uh, in that spirit of support, I wanted to leave you guys with just a couple of helpful takeaways. The first is that um, there's a free resource on Okta's website called the Businesses at Work Report. This is a screenshot of it, and the URL is down at the bottom. You can go check it out right now. Um, so, the, so the cool thing is that when you are a company like Okta and you have thousands of customers from all different sectors connecting to all different kinds of technologies, um, you can start to see interesting patterns in the data. And so we started the Businesses at Work Report several, several years ago really to help organizations, whether they're our customers or not, this is a free tool, but um, really to help them understand what apps and tools are most popular, are fastest growing, are really gaining traction in the market, and just to make sense of all of the options that you have out there. So what you can do with this report, um, it's actually a dashboard, so it's dynamic, and you can search by either types of tools if you want to dig specifically into something like collaboration software and see what the most popular collaboration tools are, um, or you can search by industry. So if you want to say, what a, if you really want to look at just nonprofits and what the most used tools are in that sector, you can. Or if you want to look across all of our different um, industries, you can search by that as well. Um, but really what this is, I think, is a nice shortcut. Um, if you're short on time and resources, but you want to quickly benchmark what the top tools are among, again, the organizations in Octa's um, ecosystem, you can use this report. And I think we're finding that a lot of, um, a lot of folks out there are really starting to leverage it as a tool in their toolkit to, um, to quickly understand best practice, benchmarks, and, and what's out there and what, what tools to, to, to be exploring. So please feel free to take a look at that. Um, and I'm happy to answer more questions about that if you have them. And finally, um, you know, I, I hope now through, um, through both what, what we shared and, and, and what Christine shared in particular, that you have a better understanding of how important and really transformative identity management can be for your organization. There are many, many solutions out there. Um, but if you're interested in ours, here are the details on our nonprofit offering. So um, any qualified nonprofit qualified through TechSoup um, can receive 25 free licenses of all of our core products. We also offer discounts for additional licenses above and beyond 25. Um, so that's one piece of it, right, is just getting our technology into the hands of nonprofits, and that's what that's really about. Um, but we know that enablement is, uh, is a huge part of making that donation of technology mean something. And so we also offer 50% over uh, off of all of our public training courses, which are wonderful. Uh, we even have a certification program for Okta um, that is new and growing and very popular you can take advantage of. Um, and then we, uh, we like to also bring our community together. And we think in many cases, the best ways to learn, um, to learn and, to, and to sort of accelerate your technology initiatives come from hearing from others. Um, 
And so we have uh, an annual customer conference called Octane and nonprofits can attend that conference for free. Uh, and so that's another piece of what we do. You can find out more information about our offer at the URL below um, here on the slide or in the link that Seema has been sending around on the chat. And um, with that, I will turn it back to Seema for Q&A and ha happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Christine. So um, we're going to go ahead and move over to the Q&A. So if you guys have questions, there's the chat box on the left-hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and read out some of the questions that we have. So, um, so I think, Erin, this question is for you. How would you compare Okta to services such as Google's SSO single sign-on tools? Yeah, so like I said, there's a lot of solutions out there. Um, and I think what, I think what, what makes Okta unique, uh, I, would, I would call out two things. The first is that we are um, very intentionally independent and neutral. So that means that we exist as a, a platform that enables you to integrate to any technology. We are not really trying to sell you anything else. <laughs> so we don't have an opinion necessarily on what collaboration tool you use or what CRM you use or what donor platform you use. We, we really, our, our mission is about giving you the best platform to connect to whatever you decide is the best technology for your organization. And so we, are, um, we think that being independent and neutral and being very uh, focused on that sets us apart and really enables us to, to focus our energies on in our mission, right, which is to enable any organization to use any technology. So I would say, say that's one. And then number two, this is a bit more practical. Um, we have uh, a, a, a network of 5,000 sort of pre-built integrations. So you turn on Okta and you immediately have access to 5,000 uh, tools and applications that are already ready to go uh, and ready to be, you know, turned on within our system. So we like to think that that just makes things easier and again gets, gets you um, a lot faster time to value by using our tool. And I believe that link was floating around in the chat as well, um, where you can actually see and search what those 5,000 pre-built integrations look like. And I would say maybe the third thing is just, again, our, you know, our focus on the nonprofit um, ecosystem and our desire to, to help and support nonprofits uh, we believe that nonprofits deserve the ac you know, access to the best technologies just like anybody else. And so uh, having an intentional focus on that, um, while it's a nascent program for us, we're very committed to it and uh, committed to seeing that grow. And so, um, you know, particularly for you guys, um, I would say that's, that's the third one. Great. Um, okay. So Christine, I think uh, this one is a question for you. Um, so are City Year's members accessing the cloud apps from laptops, tablets, or phones? Um, you know, and then in terms of restrictions of how people can use Okta and you know, the security aspect, does it really matter you know, what they're logging in from? Sure. Um, so I think just to follow up on um, Aaron's point, because it's relevant to this question as well, um, I, what I didn't mention in um, portions of my presentation is um, City Year, part of our technology strategy was built to really support bring your own device. Um, you can imagine we have uh, 3,000 members walking around with different types of phones and tablets and whatever we issue out um, to perform work. So um, at the core of our technology strategy was uh, we were going to be device agnostic, um, and just really focus on the user experience. So uh, again, can't emphasize uh, how helpful Okta has been um, in us standing up an identity management platform. Um, and if, if you're an organization that isn't interested in doing a lot of bake off and wanting to stand something up, uh, take a look at it. But to answer the question directly, uh, we are device agnostic. So uh, we have people that use laptops. We have people that use Macs. We have people that bring in their own devices. Um, so really, um, the ability to deploy a portal and uh, feel good as an IT uh, person that um, you know, we are provisioning and providing access to the right enterprise apps for um, folks on the ground that need real-time data. It's, it's honestly something that um, 
you know, we, we don't do a lot of thinking about because it's deployed and um, people have a self-service opportunity to uh, manage themselves in the Okta portal. They can reset their own passwords. And if they choose to do so, they can add their own app. So um, going back to Aaron's comment about um, all of the, you know, the apps accessible through um, the Okta tool, it's really plug and play. Um, it's, and it, it's just, it's returned so much time to the IT department that, you know, we're, we're now focused on other things like helping the network with um, better and faster predictive analytics versus, um, you know, helping people navigate the systems or reset passwords. So hopefully that, that answered the question for you, Seema. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think we have, you know, there's, I think some people on this call are probably pretty IT and tech savvy, and then, you know, some people are probably not. So um, we got a question. Someone said they're a little bit lost, and they just want some more clarity. Like if you are a, you know, smaller organization, um, you know, for you guys, you have members across the country, um, but if you're a smaller organization that, you know, maybe doesn't require um, as many passwords, you know, is this still a useful tool? Um, and I think this, this can go to Aaron or, or Christine. Okay. I think this is probably more of an Aaron I, question. I have, sure. Um, I'm happy to answer it. Although, Christine, I would love to hear your take on it as a, as a technology professional, but in a nonprofit, if you have an answer to that, and then I'm happy to give, give the Okta answer as well. Sure. Um, and I, I think my answer would be it's, it's, it's absolutely beneficial, um, especially if you have limited capacity as an IT professional to support your organization. Um, this is really um, something you stand up, and um, you know it. You have to set it up, but then you're you're setting up your user base to really experience self-service, which is I think a kind of nirvana for any kind of organization, whether you're nonprofit or not. And um, the other thing I might offer is, um, you know, a great way to learn more. I think um, is to really kind of also. Um, just look at the Octane conference. Um, it's pretty cool, and if you know you can sign up for free. Um, there's plenty of um, sessions and um, support there to just explore identity management um, in in a in a way to help you learn more and understand customers' use cases because it really is about community versus um, the product. Um, so just a sort of afterthought about that as well. Aaron, great, and then great. And, oh yeah, um, Aaron. I, I'll just thank you. I'll, I'll just add, um, you know, if you're if you're a small organization, but you get to the point where you even are managing four or five or six different cloud applications for your employees, um, that gets to be a bit unmanageable. Even if you're just looking at, you know, those sort of half a dozen or so applications um, and maybe 20, 25 or so employees with pass passwords to all of those things and with a need to log in every day and navigate among all that stuff. Um, and on top of that, you don't necessarily have an IT person on staff, so somebody else is managing that. Um, and on top of that, you might have people kind of coming and going um, more often than, than you want. I mean, these are just realities for small organizations that we work with. Um, Okta can be a really, really great solution for that. Um, even in that very sort of simple circumstance, because I think you're still you're still having to um, manage a lot more than is uh, you know it, than you want to in terms of that level of work, right? And so um, there's a lot of bells and whistles and and fancy stuff that we do, but at the heart of it, it really is just about kind of getting in between you know your people and your technologies and having a one-stop shop to um, to, to give people access, to turn things on, to turn things off, and, um, and return that time. And so I do think it's a, it's a, and you know, we're happy to talk to those of you more offline who are interested in solutions for smaller organizations um, and, and help you kind of understand that better. Um, but it is a very, um, it's still, I think, a compelling uh, value add and sort of return to time solution for those contexts. Great, thank you. Um, so, in terms of the, um, you know, the 25 free licenses, does 25 licenses is that 25 users or, um, 
how, do, how does that work exactly? Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's 25 users. So you can think about that as 25 employees, the size of your organization. Our core IT products that we make available through Okta for Good um, primarily serve internal employee users. Um, and so, or, or in the case of, you know, Christine, we think about AmeriCorps, right? So um, you can think about who your stakeholders are, but it's 25 licenses across all of those core products um, for each of your employees. Got it. Okay. Um, and then we had another question. It's a, it's a more technical question. So in terms of, you know, a lot of applications now have two-step verification um, and then password change requirements. How does you know Okta, you know, and City are also like when that happens? How does that work within the within the tool? Great. So this is Aaron, and I have a phone a friend person here sitting next to me who's going to answer this very technical question. Um, I would like to introduce Tucker McLean uh, from our team here at Okta who can answer that expertly. Go ahead. So um, for many of the applications within the, uh, the Okta integration network, um, we use SAML to connect Okta to the service provider. Um, and SAML is a much more secure method for logging into an application. Um, and it's basically, it establishes a token between Okta and whatever the application may be, whether that's Salesforce or G Suite or O365. In the case of SAML, there is no username and password. It's all token-based, so there is no password reset that needs to happen. Um, for many of the other applications um, where it actually Okta is storing the username and password, um, it's a bit more nuanced. There's a couple of different ways that it can be done. Um, a username and password can actually be set by the Okta um, administrator. Um, or it can be set by the actual end user, in which case it's simply stored within Okta. Now, if the service provider requires a password reset, um, and most of those are flexible within an administrator, so you can actually turn that off within the service provider and have Okta manage any password reset, so you don't have to worry about the service provider doing that. Um, but if it does require a reset, Okta can actually facilitate that and store that reset password um, just as it would store any other password. So that's kind of a long-winded and somewhat nuanced answer, but uh, there's a number of different ways that can be managed. Awesome. All right. Sounds like you phoned the right friend. Um, cool. Okay, so I think we have maybe time for one more question. Um, Someone was just asking in terms of general password, you know, security, whether they have Okta or not. Like, do you guys have any general advice, um, you know, whether it's length or, you know, frequency of changing passwords? Do you have any, I guess, general security advice for the audience? Christine, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, um, so City here is, um, <clears throat> has uh, as part of the roadmap um, security work um, that we're working on with the network. As you can imagine, a, a sort of forced password reset is a big uh, change management activity for us as an organization when you have so many people onboarding and offboarding on an annual basis. So um, having said that, we do have um, an annual password refresh, um, and right now we are evaluating um, sort of what the, the password syntax needs to look like, and uh, we'll be assessing whether or not to apply that for uh, next year's members who are joining us. Great. All right, so I think uh, that brings us to the end of the um, Q&A. Is there, Erin, did you want to add Sorry, one, to that? one quick note from Octo. We're going to throw a link into the, into the chat with some, um, some tips and advice from our side as well. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Cool. All right. So Erin, uh, Christine, if you had anything, did you want to add anything else, or are you guys good to go? No, just I'm thank you so much for the time and for sticking with us here. Hope it was helpful, and um, we're happy to, to chat more with anyone following the following the call. 
Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move into our uh, final slide. So um, you guys should have seen this link in the chat, but if you're curious about how to get started with the 25 free licenses, um, just visit this URL and all of the information is there. Um, so again, thank you Aaron and Christine for today's webinar. It was really helpful. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys. It's always good for us to know, you know what you learned in today's webinar. So if you could just take a second to use the chat box to share you know, one thing that you learned in today's webinar, it's always good for us to have, have that feedback. Um, we also have a post-event survey that you should get once you close out, and you'll also get it in the follow-up email. Um, if you could take a few minutes just to answer those questions, Again, your feedback helps us dictate you know, future content and what's valuable to you guys, and we can customize our you know, webinars accordingly. Um, we're also on social media, so we love social media love. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, please give us a follow. Um, we post a lot of tips and tricks and how-tos and things like that. Um, we also have a blog, which is blog.techsoup.org. Again, we post there about two to three times a week. So you know, we would love to uh, share that information with you. And we have a webinar coming up next week called Digital Fundraising Tools and Trends for 2018. So please join us if you have the time next, uh, I believe it's next Tuesday at 11 a.m. And lastly, again, I would like to thank Erin and Christine for helping us today and to our sponsor, webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk. Thank you all so much for joining and hope to see you on next week's webinar. <laughs>